Jessica Jasinski uh, talking to Mayor, May Berenbaum. Hi, how are you this evening? Can't complain. We have a nice crowd here. Very good. How long have you been with the ESA? Oh gosh, I got my 30 year pin in the mail the other day. I joined in um, December 1980, I think. My wow. first semester as an as a assistant professor. That is fantastic. I remember you telling me a story not too long ago, and I was hoping you could share that with us about how you became kind of a spokesperson for uh, honeybees and the colony collapse disorder. Sure. Um, so I'm a member of the National Academy of Sciences and uh, spent a term as the, um, uh, the chair of the board, so-called Board on Agriculture and Natural Resources. And this is a board of the Natural, National Research Council, the kind of working arm of the National Academy, and is the group that organizes uh, studies uh, to provide um, objective scientific advice to the nation. And a group had appro approached the board about funding a study to determine the status of pollinators in North America. And I thought this was a splendid idea. I supported it actively. Then my term ended. And as soon as I stepped down from the board, I was asked to chair this new committee on the study of pollinators. So we spent about 18 months um, studying the issue, examining the literature, having uh, public meetings, and talking to experts. And, you know, I had chaired this committee, not because I had great expertise in pollination biology, but because I knew the National Research Council. I'd been on the board on agriculture when this uh, uh, project first came to light, and I'd had some experience chairing committees. So uh, we released a report in uh, October 2006, and one of our principal findings was that uh, the uh, there was a demonstrable decline in uh, the stocks of managed uh, honeybees in North America, and in, in fact, if this decline continued, that um, this was an industry in trouble, and by 2035, we could potentially have no uh, apiculture industry, which would be disastrous because about 90 crops and about 15 billion dollars worth of U.S. agriculture depend on honeybees. Depends on honeybees, uh, and that very same month is when. Um, first reports of colony collapse disorder started to appear. So we really appeared, the, the study committee appeared to be very prescient. We basically predicted that this was an unstable situation. Any kind of disaster could really um, tip the balance, not in America's favor. Uh, and in the sort of surrounding concern, which kind of uh, peaked in the middle of February when Half of America's bees are transported to California to, to pollinate the, at that time, 600,000 acres of, of almond trees, which all of which depend on honeybees for pollination. There was a, a panic that there might not be enough bees to meet the needs of the almond growers. Got the attention of the New York Times, and the New York Times invited me to write an op-ed not uh, article, not because I'm an expert on bees, but because I chaired this committee, and that op-ed led to uh, congressional testimony, and, and since that time I've kind of become a, a spokesperson for all things APIS. Okay. Also, given all of that, how has that affected your research focuses? Well, we got very involved. I, uh, this uh, Being immersed in this literature and in this situation uh, really piqued my interest. And we um, undertook a few. Uh, one of the recommendations was to involve uh, public citizen scientists in remedying some of the problems with uh, uh, data, uh, uh, the lack of data on uh, the status of, of wild pollinators. So we started started a couple of outreach projects, uh, and I also w got involved in colony collapse disorder because for years I'd worked on um, insect detoxification. Uh, most of my focus was on the detoxification of natural, uh, naturally occurring phytochemicals by herbivorous insects, but the same methods apply uh, to studying how honeybees process all kinds of toxins, both natural and, and synthetic. And I was uh, recruited uh, into this nationwide effort to investigate colony collapse disorder. So now we have an ongoing project um, to understand honeybee toxicology, uh, which uh, when we were invited to uh, become involved, I came to realize had been astoundingly neglected over the last 30 years, despite the fact that honeybee encounters with pesticides have been increasing steadily, particularly since the introduction of varroa mites, so that now uh, beekeepers are using miticides in the hive to manage them. So the whole chemical environment of the honeybee has changed, and that for toxicologists is very interesting. Well, thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your meeting. So far, so good. Thanks. Thanks.